All right, Philippians chapter 2, please, and we will read verse 12. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. So, as Bible-believing dispensationalists, we believe in rightly dividing verses to the right group of people and the right time period. By not doing that, you combine verses together and you come up with wrong doctrine. Now, our solution is simple. Our solution is that in dispensationalism, we believe this, is that basically throughout the Old Testament, and then uh, right here, Old Testament, and then we got the church age right here, and then we also have the tribulation age right here, and then the 1,000 year millennial reign. So whenever verses talk about salvation, we believe that any verse that has to do with works, if you look at the context, it will always refer to these group of people, Jews. Now, Jews, they were used at the Old Testament, but we know God now temporarily put them off, and now he's focusing on the church. The Jews, God focuses the, his attention on them at the tribulation and fully restores them at the millennium. So this time period is not a work system. So we see here works, and then here is no works. It's faith alone. Now, what about New Testament passages where it shows faith and works for salvation. We argue that the Apostles' ministry was to the Jews. The Apostle Paul was to the Gentiles. So you see the Apostles, when they were ministering to Jews, and if you know your Bible uh, story, God was not done with the Jews yet. He was still using them. But then later on, you know what happened. God was done with the Jews later on. And then he focused completely on the Gentiles. That's why he kept saying, I'm going to turn from the Jews and turn to the Gentiles. He kept saying that over and over. And then he was still dealing with Jews, though, but it was fading out. During that fading out process, the apostles were ministering to them. See, So what you got to understand is that if you look at the general epistles, if you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and if you look at the book of Revelation, anything that has to do with works, we would refer that to the Jews. And the time period would be in a tribulation reference as well. So I'm not going to go through all of that. I taught you last time. Now, that's why uh, uh, different cults who are good in apologetics, it's really easy to debunk them when you mention dispensationalism because they never heard of different salvation plans before. But they know how much we rely on the Apostle Paul. So what they will use is these passages. Look at Philippians chapter 2. And we will read verse 12. Notice it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, if you look at CatholicAnswers.com, it's like that's their favorite verse. Whenever you use Romans and Galatians to debunk works for salvation, they're going to say, oh, but your beloved Apostle Paul, he did realize there were works for salvation. And they will always jump to Philippians 2.12. They will always do that. So this is an important passage to know. Now remember, we know that our salvation plan is no works because of the Apostle Paul. And it's at the time period of the church. So that's what we believe in. So any Pauline verse you look at, it's going to show no works, no works, no works. It's faith, faith, and faith. But then, what are you going to do with verses like these, right? What are you going to do with verses like these? The answer is more simple than you think. You're going to notice right here that it did, it did not say work for your salvation, right? It says work out your salvation. Here's the key. The verse is work out, right? Not work for, right? You know what that means? That means you're not working for your salvation. You're not working to get saved. Salvation was previously, Amen. before you worked. Yeah. So this is before, see that? Before you worked. Before you worked, salvation was already in you. See that? So before you can even work out the salvation, how can you work it out if the salvation wasn't in you to begin with? See that? So that is a simple argument to debunk it. How you simply debunk it is that you ask them a simple question. Just ask them, how can you work out your salvation 
if, sal if you weren't already saved to begin with, if you didn't have salvation in you to begin with. Because remember, the Catholics and the cults, they're saying that you can't know for certain that you're saved. See that? You can't say for a fact if you died right now that you go to heaven because it depended on your works. But the Bible shows this. Then you can't even work out your salvation. <laughs> That's a strong argument. A powerful argument is telling them this. Then Philippians 2.12 does not apply to you. And that's true. Philippians 2.12, that's a true statement. Philippians 2.12, you know what it applies to? It does not apply to Catholics, Jehovah Witness, or anybody. It only, and I mean only, applies to saved Christians. You, that's why no matter what good work you do as a lost person, it's counted as what? Nothing. Amen. Nothing. It doesn't count. It's counted as filthy rags in God's sight. It's not counted for salvation at all. See? So salvation was already in you, and because of that, you're working it out. See? That's why um, it's a saying, okay? It's not, it's not as difficult as you think. Basically, what we're saying is this. Because salvation is in you now, you can't waste that salvation. Jesus died for you, saved your soul. You can't waste that salvation he gave you now. Why not put it to good use now? See that? Now that you're a saved Christian, now why don't you pray to him? Why don't you read your Bible? Why don't you go to church? Why don't you win souls? Why don't you start doing good works for him? Because before, your good works didn't count, and God ignored all of that. Now that you're saved, you got a chance to start doing good works and accomplishing something. So go to Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians 2. This makes perfect sense now. Oh, uh, keep your hand at Philippians 2, I'm sorry, but uh, no, it's okay. Just go to Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, yada, yada, yada. So Philippians 2, I'll just quote this, verse 13. They forgot to read this part. Yeah. You know what verse 13 says? You know why you can work out your salvation, work out? For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. See that? You know why you can work out your salvation? Because God's already in you. Amen. Because God previously already entered inside you and working in you. That's why you can work out the salvation. Now go to Ephesians chapter 2. Now this makes sense. Verse 8 through 10. Verse 8, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. This verse says you're, you cannot get saved by good works no matter what. But why would it contradict itself at verse 10? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Why would it contradict itself? Would Paul be that stupid? Or is verse 8 and 9 about salvation because verse 8 says saved, right? Saved. Verse 8 and 9, the context is salvation. And verse 10, verse 10, the context is walk, Christian walk. Because verse 10 said walk in them. See that? So Philippians 2.12 is not about salvation. It's about your walk. You see that? It's about your Christian walk. If you insist it's about salvation because it says salvation, why would it say to work out the salvation? See? Why well, would it say to work it out, not to receive the salvation? But the greatest evidence now is Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. Now use this verse. After you show them Philippians 2, 12, and then you jump to 2, 13, God gets in you, you use Ephesians 1. 13 through 14, and then you got them. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. Now in this passage right here, what does it say? In whom he also trusted, after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that he believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So notice right here, how does God get inside you? Because remember Philippians 2, 13, right? God worketh in you. How did God get inside you? Because of verse 13, because you believed. You believed in the gospel. He never said work. You believed. 
and then God is sealed in you. Now, when it's sealed, it means it can't go away. So Jehovah Witnesses and cultists, they might think this way, that you could lose your salvation if you don't do your works. Oh, it's faith and works, faith and works. That's what they'll like to argue, play with works, words. But verse 14 says, how long is the sealing? All the way to the rapture, verse 14, which is the earnest inheritance, uh, the earnest of our inheritance until we go to heaven, we inherit, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory, until you give him the full praise. See, it's sealed all the way till the end. So this one's a strong verse. So it shows right here that you're sealed all the way to the end. You cannot lose your salvation, and you can't even work. See, you can't even work until you get saved. Because, see, God is sealed inside you. Isn't it a waste now that you live your life in sin and not doing good works? Yeah. Because it's sealed inside you, thus you should work it out. That's why we have the saying that the Holy Spirit fills so much in you that it can even come out of you and affect people around you. Amen. You see that?